Hello all, welcome to part 271 of Core Java training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate about method chaining. So let's get started. So what is this method chaining? So let me explain this concept with an example so that you can understand easily. So first I'll create a string class string str is equal to new string like this we can create a string or directly also we can create a string guys okay like this also is a direct way of uh, creating a string shortcut way of creating a string instead of uh, creating the string in the form of an object creation process okay string str i'll give my name guys okay i'll give my name here now i'll say str dot okay dot replace one of the methods of the string class I'm going to use here that is a replace method so I'm going to use this replace method and here I'll give the old character any one of the method okay for a sample I'm taking replace method it's not compulsory for you to okay understand the replace method here you can use any of the methods uh, of the string class uh, for example I'm taking the replace method you have to understand I want to replace a space with underscore I want to replace the space with underscore Okay, this is what I want to do. Now, this replace method is written in the string class. String str2 is equal to, okay, like this. Now, I'll write another line, str2 dot, okay. I'll use one more method, guys, okay. I'll use one more method, concat method I'll use, okay. str2 dot concat, I'll just concat with space some space okay this str2 i'm concatting with space and this concat is returning you again the object object type of string class okay i'll say string str3 is equal to now again str3 dot concat okay concat str3 dot concat here i'll write uh here space is already concatenated. underscore is already there uh then after numutary space concatenation i'll give uh core java like this okay core java now uh i can write more lines okay this concat will return you another string okay uh string object str4 else now i'll say str4 dot replace Again, I want to replace here space with underscore. I want to replace space with underscore. Okay. Now, finally, I want to print system.out.println. So, this replace will return you the string. So, I'll store string str5 I'll say is equal to. Now, finally, I'll print this string. This is a long process, right? As you can see, how many lines of code I have written here. Okay. Starting from here, if you see, okay have written line one two three four five six total six lines I have written and i'll get the final output here anyhow i'm going to reduce the number of lines okay arun underscore motri underscore core underscore java okay this is fine same output the same output i can get by writing less number of lines how that is possible here if you see when i say str dot replace this replace is returning what string right I am storing the object of the string class into the str2. Is it required really? Not required. Remove that. Simply say str.replace. Anyhow, replace is giving or returning the object of the string class. So I'll say object of the string class dot directly concat. I'll move that here. I don't need this line. Okay. You say I don't have to write multiple uh, lines of code to call these methods. Okay. So one line got already saved. Now this concat method is again giving the object type of the string class. This is nothing but the object of the string class. So I'll say dot again, I'll say concat. I don't have to store that into object and then call. I don't have to store into str3 and then call the method. Rather, I can call this method directly here. Directly, guys. You don't need this line, extra line, okay? So you see multiple methods are coming in the same line, str.replace. This is the returning the object of the string class, object of the string class dot concat. Okay. Again, this is returning the object of the string class. This concat is also object dot concat. Okay. Object of the string class dot concat. And finally, 
dot replace also same thing. Okay, this is also written in the string, and you say dot replace, and now remove this part. Now simply, simply store this in one string. String str two is equal to. Okay, now simply say str two. You see, did I reduce the number of lines by calling the method at this level? Okay, you see. This method is retaining the object of the string class. So object of the string class directly dot concat. Object of the string class directly dot concat. Object of the string class directly dot replace. This kind of approach or process of reducing the number of lines of code in the Java programming is called as method chaining, guys. Okay, you don't have to write different lines of statements. Okay, I'll give you one more example. Okay, here every method is retaining the object of the same string class. So you may be getting confused that it should return the object of the same string class. But I'm going to give you one more example where it doesn't return the object of the same string class, but still you can method chain. Okay, so for now, let's get the output and see whether we are getting the same output or not. Okay, you see, we got the same output Arun underscore motor underscore core underscore Java. Okay, so this is one example of the method chaining. Now I'll create uh, something like an array list, okay? Array list, array list, a list is equal to new array list, okay? Array list, a list is equal to new array list. Over the mouse on this array list and import this array list from Java, but it will package. Now here, give the generics. You can give the same thing here. Uh, here I'll say a list dot of uh, something. Uh, you can give anything else. Uh, you can give integer also, that's fine. Uh, here also, I just mentioned integer. That's fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll say a list dot add of. I'll give some value nine. A list dot add of five. A list dot add some numbers I'm adding. Okay, integer uh, values uh, objects I'm adding. Okay, nine five seven. Let's say these three things are enough. So now I'll say a list dot iterator okay a list dot iterator i'm calling this iterator method using the object reference of the array list class in java right now this iterator is returning what object type of it iterator interface this is a method it is a return type of this iterator method is iterator interface so here i'll say iterator of integer i'll say idr is equal to Okay, over the mouse, import this from java.util package. Now I'll write a while logic while itr dot as next, as next, okay, like this. You can write and keep on showing, going forward, okay. So I want to get the next one, okay. I want to go and find the next one. So this one will return you the Boolean value or something, okay. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is instead of writing this many lines, what I can do here is I'll remove this part and directly say here a list dot to get that boolean value okay to get that boolean value i don't have to store this iterator object iterator method return type into object of the iterator interface and then call as next okay i can directly call this is returning the object of the iterator interface so i'll simply say dot as next, I can directly call this method. You see, this is called as method chaining, guys. This is called as method chaining. As next is returning what? Boolean value. Okay, it's written in the Boolean value, guys. Okay, you can print it out. Okay, you can print it out. Okay, so whether true or false, you can print it out. Okay, so what I mean to say here is I am doing something like this a list dot iterator, and this is returning me the object type of the iterator interface. Iterator integer idr is equal to now system dot out dot print dll or you can simply say itr dot has next like this you can write and this will return the boolean value that is boolean boolean b is equal to that b i am going to print here okay that b i am going to print here so what will be printed has next will return true because there are some elements in the array list okay so run this code, run this code, you will get true printed in the output. Okay, you'll get true printed in the output. Same output I can get by writing like this. I don't have to store this object uh, object of the return type of this iterator method into this thing. Okay, simply what I will do here is I'll simply say iterator dot has next. Okay, 
and I'll store this into this Boolean like this. Okay, I don't have to write an extra line here. You see, the object of this iterator return type or uh, return type uh, object of the return type class of this iterator method that is the iterator interface dot has next directly. You can directly call this. Okay, and by this we are saving the number of lines, and you are directly printing B. Okay, and run as Java application, you'll get the same value that is true. Okay, so so hope guys you understood uh, what is method chaining now. Okay, we don't have to write multiple lines for calling the methods of the returned object types of the methods. Okay, so what we are doing instead of writing this, uh, uh, creating multiple lines to store the object types of the methods, we are simply appending or adding the methods at the end of the methods which are returning the objects. Okay, to call other methods. Okay, so it can be the object of the same class type or object of the different class type or interface type doesn't matter. Okay, keep on adding that is called as method chaining guys. It's a very important concept you can say. Okay, one of the important or beautiful concept in Java which will uh, reduce the number of lines. Okay, so if if you see someone writing this kind of right, uh, they are writing a better code and reducing the number of lines and all. Okay, uh, we can reduce the number of lines with the help of method chaining in Java. Okay, so that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye.